NBC News Now, streaming free everywhere. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Kate Snow. Good day. We're coming on the air with breaking news. Among 17 hostages just released by Hamas is an American little girl. This comes on the third day of a four-day ceasefire. Other groups of hostages were released on Friday and late Saturday after some delays. President Biden is now speaking about these new developments. Two days ago, two days ago, one of our fellow Americans, a little girl named Abigail, who turned four years old, she spent her birthday, that birthday, and at least 50 days before that, held hostage by Hamas. <clears throat> Today, she's free, and Jill and I, together with so many Americans, are praying for the fact that she is going to be all right. You know, she's free, and she's in Israel now. And uh, so those who are now uh, wrapping Abigail in love and care and the supportive services she needs, she's been through a terrible trauma. You know, her mom was killed in front of her when her, when her kibbutz was uh, attacked by Hamas terrorists on October the 7th. Abigail ran to her dad then, who then was gunned down, gunned down as well, while using his body to shield little Abigail. She then ran to a neighbor for help, where they were all taken hostage. The, that entire house of neighbors were taken hostage by Hamas and held for 50 days. What she endured is unthinkable. Abigail was among 13 hostages released today from Gaza under the brokered and sustained, though intensive, U.S. diplomacy. She's now safely in Israel, and we continue to press and expect for additional Americans will be released as well. And we will not stop working until every hostage is returned to their loved ones. As I said when I spoke about this deal on Friday, this has been the product of a lot of hard work and weeks of personal engagement for me and my team. We have been in close contact with the leaders of Qatar, Egypt, and Israel, speaking with each one of them repeatedly over the past few weeks to help secure this deal. We spoke again yesterday with the Emir of Qatar, uh, I owe special thanks to, in order to keep the hostage release on track and push for Abigail to be part of this release. And I'll be speaking again shortly with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And we will continue to remain personally engaged, personally engaged to see that this deal is fully implemented and work to extend the deal as well. For weeks, I've been advocating to pause in the fighting for two purposes, to increase the assistance getting into the Gaza civilians who need help, and to facilitate release of hostages. And we know that innocent children in Gaza are suffering greatly as well, because this war that Hamas has unleashed is so has such consequences. Thousands have been killed, and from the earliest days of this crisis, I've worked closely with President Sisi of Egypt, the Israeli government, King Abdullah of Jordan, and leaders throughout the region to expand the delivery of critical humanitarian assistance to help innocent Palestinians in need who are not part of Hamas. Under this deal, <coughs> fighting in Gaza has now been paused for three days. Over that time, 58 hostages have been released, including the Thai, a Filipino, and Russian nationals. Dozens of families have been reunited. And we worked urgently, urgently to take advantage of the pause to surge aid into Gaza. We've moved approximately 200 aid trucks into Gaza each day, loaded with food, water, medicine, fuel, and cooking gas. More is needed, but this deal is delivering life-saving results. Critically needed aid is going in, and hostages are coming out. And this deal is structured so that it can be extended to keep building on these results that's my goal. That's our goal, to keep this pause going beyond tomorrow so that we can continue to see more hostages come out and surge more humanitarian relief into, into those in, who in need in Gaza. We've seen this is the day-by-day -day approach, hour-by-hour -hour process. Nothing is guaranteed and nothing is being taken for granted. But the proof that this is working and worth pursuing further is in every smile and every grateful tear we see on the faces of those families who are finally getting back together again. And the proof is little Abigail. More than 20 other children, 18 years and younger, have been released. They've been released through this deal as well. They've endured a terrible ordeal, and they can now begin the long journey toward healing. 
And I'm going to continue working with the Emir of Qatar, President Sisi of Egypt, and Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel to do everything possible to see the hostages are freed, all the hostages. I'm grateful for the personal partnership as we pursued this deal from each of those men I just mentioned. And as we've worked together to see the see all this implemented and now to try to extend it further. I'll continue working with all our partners to take the hard but necessary steps to build an integrated and more prosperous and more peaceful future in the region. A two-state solution is the only way to guarantee the long-term security of both Israelis and Palestinian people. To make sure Israel and Palestinians alike live in equal measure of freedom and dignity, we'll not give up on working toward that goal. So thank you very much. But thank God she's home. The little child, I guess can't imagine the enjoyment and the I, I just I wish I were there to hold her. Mr. President, do you have an update on the other Americans who are being held and any sense as to when they would be released? Uh, we are hopeful, but I don't have anything firmly to tell you at this moment. Sir, do you expect that if you are able to use this momentum to extend the pause, have you extracted any guarantees about proof of life for other hostages, or do you have an expectation of how much longer you could push this pause? Well, look, you know the deal calls for for every for every 10 hostages released to extend another day. So I'm hopeful this is not the end. It's going to continue. But we don't know. And uh, But I get a sense that um, all the players in the region, even the neighbors who aren't and have been directly involved now, are looking for a way to end this so the hostages are all released and Hamas is is completely, uh, how can I say it, no longer in control of any portion of Gaza. And do they have control of all of the hostages, or are there still other militant groups that you have to deal with? We think there are probably other militant groups, but we're not certain. Mr. President, Mr. President, how is um, Abigail doing? What's her physical condition? Um, do you have well, any information? I, I haven't gotten that information. I just wanted to let you know immediately. They were going across uh, into Egypt, as you recall. That was the route. <clears throat> but an older, non-American, elderly, elderly woman is very sick and was in need of immediate medical help. So they arranged to cross directly into Israel to be able to take her to a hospital. All I know is that she has been held. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen a photograph. I've just been in communication with my team. But she is safely ensconced in Israel. But there's a lot more work to be done. How many days would you like to see the pause go on for? I would like to see us move to a point where we were able to, uh, well, let me put it this way. I'd like to see the pause go on as long as prisoners kept coming out. All right. Thank you all so very much. Thank I know, you, you know, we have to call you. I, I know you say, what's he calling me with only 10 minutes or so notice? <laughs> I said, that's the notice I get. Because we didn't know, I didn't want to be having this press conference if they weren't physically, even when they were in the Red Cross ambulance, I didn't want to do it because they were not out. They were, they were still in Gaza. So, uh, I don't thank you enough, but thanks for your patience. You and I, it. I know it's. Uh, We're here anytime, <laughs> anytime. sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank. Happy holidays. Okay, happy holidays to you guys. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you, President Biden addressing the nation, talking about the first American hostage to be released by Hamas. She is Abigail Idan, four years old, just a little girl. The president saying she's free and she's in Israel now. He also talked about the entire release of all these hostages and the fact that we're on day three of four of a ceasefire. The president's saying he hopes that that can extend. He says, I'm hopeful this is not the end. And he's hopeful that day after day there will be more hostages released. He also talked about critically needed aid getting into Gaza as hostages come out. Let's bring in NBC's Aaron McLaughlin in Tel Aviv. So Aaron, the president said he doesn't know the status of Abigail at this point, but do we know any more from the family about where she is or how she's doing? 
Well, we are waiting to hear from the family. No doubt they are preoccupied reuniting with Abigail potentially as I speak. What was notable to me there about what the president said was a change in procedure. Normally, what happens when they release these hostages or the hostages are brought through the Rafah crossing into Egypt and then onto an Israeli Air Force base. But the president saying that they had issues, one of the hostages, an elderly, non American hostage, Israeli, had medical issues and had to be immediately evacuated to a hospital. And so the hostages, including Abigail, were brought directly into Israel. That, of course, is notable because up until this point, the hostages that have been released seem to have been in fairly good medical condition. Although, you know, psychologically, it's a completely different story. The trauma that each and every one of these hostages has endured. One Israeli military military spokesperson saying that there's not a single one of them that doesn't have either a loved one still in Gaza or a family member that was killed in front of them on October 7th, as is the case of little Abigail. And they don't know, many of them, if they even know at this point, if they're aware of the kind of trauma, if they're aware of the loved ones that they lost on October 7th. So all of that they're having to work through at this point. Uh, no doubt Abigail's family is going through this process. She's getting the specialized medical care and treatment that is necessary. And we are waiting for those first images of little Abigail reunited with her brothers and the rest of her family, Kate. Yeah, Aaron, we're showing pictures of Abigail. We also showed a little bit of video of another family uh, who was reunited in a really heartfelt scene a couple of days ago. We're seeing a lot of video like that. Um, talk about the big picture here. The president mentioned more than 20 children have been among those hostages released on three days of, of releases now. Uh, who else is being released and what's happening on the other side of things? Israelis are releasing Palestinian prisoners. Yeah, the focus of the releases so far has been very much on women and children, and it appears as though they're also trying to keep families together. So the thinking being that the other two Americans that potentially could be released maybe even tomorrow, we just don't know, are two American women that would qualify in that women and children category. You heard there the president, though, expressed the hope that this pause would continue as part of this deal for every single day of additional ceasefire. They, uh, Hamas should, under the uh, agreement, release 10 hostages. But Mark Ray gave a spokesperson for the Israeli government earlier today saying that really at this point in his view is up to Hamas to continue the release, to continue this pause. Now, momentarily, now that the Israeli hostages have crossed into Israel, we are expecting some 39 Palestinians that have been held in Israeli prisons to be released as part of this exchange. Once that happens, it'll mark the completion of the exchange for the third day and certainly be a good sign for tomorrow's exchange. Mm -hmm. Kate. Aaron, thank you so much. Uh, let's bring in NBC News White House correspondent Ali Rafa, who also was with us listening to the president. Ali, you heard the president say that he's been in close contact with all the players, with Egypt, with Qatar, with Israel. He said, I think his words were, I pushed for the release of Abby. He's, he's really been working behind the scenes. Uh, talk more about that. Absolutely, Kate. As recently as yesterday, the president was on the phone uh, with the emir of Qatar, uh, the Qatari uh, prime minister, to try to add pressure and try to iron out any problems that could impede this deal moving forward, as we saw this hours-long pause in the release of hostages by Hamas yesterday. And Qatari and Israeli officials have even credited the president and senior administration officials for adding the needed pressure to be able to seal this deal, to get this ceasefire deal. Uh, accomplished. But the president, in those remarks there, uh, it is not lost on him how incredibly fragile and delicate this deal continues to be. He called it a, quote, day-by-day -day approach. He said nothing is guaranteed and nothing is taken for granted. And as you mentioned, uh, he is pushing now for the extension of this ceasefire. That's something that National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan uh, was asked about on the Sunday shows this morning. And he said Israel <clears throat> has laid its cards out on the table, and now the ball is in Hamas's court as to whether uh, this ceasefire could be extended, Kate.
All right, Ali Rafa for us at the White House, Aaron McLaughlin in Tel Aviv. Thanks to you both. That concludes this NBC News special report. We, of course, have much more online anytime at NBCNews.com throughout the day. I'll have more tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Kate Snow. Thank you for watching.